Today on World of Faceting Machines, we're looking at the ancient polishing machines of Sri Lanka. Before modern machines, Sri Lanka used a cutting table called the Benku Pataya, which translates as bench machine, with a faceting handpiece known as the Thanasua. This is a very old machine that's been used in Sri Lanka for hundreds of years. This ancient technique actually needed several machines to take the stone from the rough form to the final faceted state. The first step would have been to saw the stone into manageable pieces. Here we can see an antique stone clamp that would have held the stone while the cutter sawed it with a blade. Once they had their stone ready to cut, you needed to make the preform. This was also done by hand on a bow-driven machine called a Hanaparua. The Hanaparua seems to have originated in India and is likely one of the earliest machine styles ever used to shape a stone. The vertical hand-turned wheel echoes a machine design seen in this German image from 1481. The Hanapurua can be equipped with different laps and different polishing grits. In this example, the lap is charged with natural carborundum powder and later quartz powder. The bow is driven back and forth with the right hand which turns the lap while the left hand holds the stone against the lap in order to shape it. This technique can be used to make cabochons or preforms for faceting. Once the shape has been made, the stone can be attached to a wooden dot. If the stone is to be a cabochon, the dot will be long and thin, which is easy to spin in the fingers. If the stone is to be faceted, it will be attached to a thick wooden dot, which will be put into the Thanasua handpiece. The dopping is done over a candle with dop wax. The final step is polishing. With a perfectly shaped preform, the facets can be placed on the stone with a polishing grit, completely bypassing the need for a cutting step. The polishing compound used is called wadi and is a homemade powder consisting of the ashes of burned palm leaves and burned rice husks. The older generation of cutters swears by wadi and says that the polish that it gave is far superior than the synthetic diamond powder that replaced it. The Benku Patalia is a two-person machine. One person would crank and the other person would polish. The polisher would use hand signals to indicate whether they wanted the cranker to slow down, speed up, or stop. The hand signals haven't yet been forgotten and if you look closely you can see them being used here. The copper polishing lap is turned by the rope attached to a crank and loaded with wadi. The Thanasua handpiece goes up and down on the stick next to the lap and the facets are placed by eye by adjusting the dop angle or freehand rotating it. Not an easy task. Incredibly enough, this machine and handpiece are exact copies of machines used in Europe that date back to 1599. Here we can see a drawing from Prague in 1609 showing the exact same machine with a handpiece which they called a quadrant. Later in the century, we see the same machine appear in Paris with a handpiece titled in French as the Cadran. The French depiction and the Sri Lankan machine are nearly identical and the handpieces have almost the exact same shape. It's clear that this machine came to Sri Lanka from Europe, though no one seems to remember who brought it. The Portuguese, the Dutch, and the British all had colonies in Sri Lanka over the last 400 years, and they all had booming gemstone industries, so it's possible that any of them might have brought this machine to Sri Lanka. The survival of this multiple machine faceting technique provides us with a living time capsule that shows us how faceting might have looked in Renaissance Europe when it was in its earliest days. Preforming the rough stone on a hand-cranked vertical wheel and then polishing the facets on a hand-cranked table. Nowadays, the Banku Patalia has been completely replaced by modern Imahashi-style handpiece machines, but the Hanapurua can still be seen in the streets of Sri Lanka's gem districts, used by lapidaries to cut and polish star sapphires. Thanks for watching and come back next time when we'll explore the Czech version of this machine from its roots in 1609 all the way till the modern day. See you next time on World of Faceting Machines.